databases. So this is a, a database where uh, Mrs. Smith runs this dog sitting service where dogs uh, go to stay with her when the owners are away on holiday. So at the moment, the database has two tables. It's got the dog table and a job table. So the job table stores uh, information about daily jobs that need to be done for each dog. And the dog table stores information about essentially the dogs uh, that are staying. So there's some example data. We've got two tables. Uh, dog ID, name, sex, weight, breed, date arrived and date departed. And in the job table, uh, which is this one, we've got job number, dog ID, task, time of day, and some details about what to do. So we might be asked in an exam to identify primary key fields. So in this case, the primary key for dog is going to be dog ID. So primary key, remember, is a unique identifier that identifies that record. Uh, when you compare it to any other record, it'll automatically it'll, um, uniquely identify that record. Then we've got the jobs table. Uh, it's going to be job number in this case. So the job number is just a number for each job. And we'll have a new number for every job that's done. So that's a primary key in that case. Um, explain why the dog ID field is in the jobs table. Well, this is um, the dog ID table, the dog ID field, sorry, here is a foreign key. So it links to the dog table here as a foreign key. So that means that I can identify the dog that the job is for by looking it up in the dog table. So it's a foreign key. So we'll write that down, foreign key, and that's the reason why it's in. So then there's another question here, which this is possibly a bit more advanced than you might get at GCSE, but suggest why the date arrived and date departed fields should perhaps not be in the dog table. Um, well, if, if each dog is identified by an ID, and that persists with that particular dog. If we have the date arrived and date departed um, in there, it means that we can only put a dog in that table once uh, because it can only visit once, in other words, uh, unless we just amend the record every time it comes in instead of having a new entry for the table. Um, so it might be better if they were in a separate table. But for the purposes of what we've got here, it does work and we can we can keep it and it's not a problem. But you can see that if we had dog ID number one that arrived on the 21st of January and if dog ID number one came uh, to the kennels again uh, at a later date, then we wouldn't be able to put another entry in for dog ID number one because it's the primary key is already there. Um, so we'd have to amend these dates in the in the current record in order to update the database properly. So it might lead to some data inconsistency. OK, so draw an entity relationship diagram that shows the relationship between the two tables. So we've already drawn into line here. So we've got um, the dog table. And we've got the jobs table. like that and then our relationship between the two um dog id in the dog table is a primary key so it is going to be one at that end and in the jobs table it's not a primary key so it's going to be many so that means one dog um can have many jobs so we might feed the dog walk the dog brush the dog all those different kinds of jobs that would be for one dog so one dog has many jobs and we've identified that because dog id in the dog table is the primary key so it has to be one at this end it's not the primary key in this table so it can be more than one at this end and in this case it will be so we've done the first part of this question by looking at the database and explaining um, 
what each of the fields uh, does where we've been asked to do so 